Okay. Uh, steps to go like. All right, let's see here. Got the water chip. Uh, found the thief. All right, so we're going to be joining the Brotherhood today, I think. But first, we have to get through uh, a dungeon called the Glow. Is there, do I have any ropes? I'm going to need one. I don't appear to have a rope. I need to go find one. All right. Okay. Did they give me the location for the glow yet? Doesn't look like it. Okay. Well, anyway. Let me try heading for the hub and see if anybody there can sell me a rope. Counter. What's going on here? Oh, rad scorpions. No big deal. Thank you. 
All right, let's see if anybody here can sell me a, a rope. Yeah, they've got lots of books in, in the hub. That's always nice. Okay, let's see here. Boop. Give them the 12 for that. Well, do I have anything I can sell them for the for some caps? Mm, got some extra guns. All right, let's get rid of those. Boop. Take everything you have. Thank you. All right, let's go find the glow. Oh, this is a uh, um, one of the rare encounters. So these are the talking cows. I can't believe I never got directions to the glow. Oh well. I think it's down here somewhere. There we go. So I need to take some uh, Radex. Let me check the Geiger counter. Did I get any, any radiation on my way in? Hi, Adam. No, not, you haven't missed much yet. Um, I don't think there's, we've done anything yet, so we're... we're we're headed into the glow, which is a uh, uh, rather important site here. We're going to find out uh, some stuff about the uh, FEV um, and learn about a little bit about the origins of the Brotherhood of Steel. Which, uh, irritatingly enough, the new uh, Fallout 76 has decided to retcon most of this stuff. It really uh, annoys me. Yeah, Fallout 76 makes absolutely no sense to me. Alright. Do I have Radix? 
I mean, right, right away. There's right away. Okay, so I've got plenty of right away. Uh, rim counter reads 18. All right, let's go ahead and use a single right away. I'm doing okay, Adam. Uh, the talking cows there. Um, that was a special encounter, one of many sort of silly things they put in this game that you can randomly find. You know, stuff like running into to, um, the shuttlecraft Galileo from Star Trek, or um, finding a crashed alien spaceship, or just randomly running into the knights from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Uh, Fallout 76 is supposed to be set uh, very shortly after the the war, so it would it's set like a um, hundred years before this game. Um, but it it it's also set in in Appalachia, but it has the Brotherhood of Steel in it, which makes absolutely no sense because the Brotherhood of Steel starts here in California. Um, and they don't make, we know they don't make the soldier into the East Coast until after the events of Fallout 2. There's a lot of stuff that, that was already didn't make sense about Fallout 3 and Fallout 4. I mean, just the... Alright, so let's see here. So this place got a, a direct hit uh, from the nuke. Get in. All right, let's see if I remember my way around this place. It's littered with traps. make sure we find all the key cards. Okay. An extra right, right away is going to be nice. I don't think I actually get many fights here, so let's actually keep the Geiger counter on so I can uh, keep checking to see what my rad, rads are at. Okay, free stim pack, that's not bad. Let's see here. 
You sense that there's a trap nearby. Yeah. <sighs> well, if this game had a means of actually disarming traps, that would be that would help. But anyway. All right. So there is a trap on this door. Um, I can't go that way until I have the right key card. I think. I don't think there's anything in that room that I need. Alright, one of the big things we want to get here is this guy has, uh, in addition to having one of the key cards, he has this hollow disc. The hollow disc is something the, uh, Brotherhood of Steel is going to want. Let's see here. Eh, an assault rifle would be nice, yeah. I don't think I have one yet. Yeah, I don't have any 5mm, huh? Okay. Oh, there's a 14mm pistol. I can sell it. Alright, so we find out you can't turn on the power until you get the generators back on. Uh, the Brotherhood of Steel already existed before this game. It's it's the NCR that gets their start in this one. The the New California Republic is is founded um, in the ending of this game. If you rescued uh, Tandy and uh, saved uh, Shady Sands from the uh, Scorpions, from the Rad Scorpions. All right, let's see here. I think we already have a motion sensor, don't we? Yeah, okay, we don't need that. Don't need a book of science. Yeah, we're good. Uh, like I said, they, the Brotherhood of Steel would only have been in Cal based out of California in, at the time, and Fallout, the, the Fallout, 76, Fallout 76 is set. Second floor. Now, I think until we activate the generator, the robots will not attack me. And once we activate the... Um, the generator, we can uh, sh uh, use our science skill to shut down the... Uh, uh, auto defense anyway. Okay, I got some rockets. I never really use those, but fun to have anyway. Yeah, they couldn't have been in West Virginia because they were still based in California at the time. They don't leave California until after the events of Fallout 2. Uh, don't really need a leather armor.
Grab some grenades from that guy. I do need the plastic explosives and dynamite later, I think. Oh, flame refuel. Eh. There's a plasma grenade. I never really use those much. I don't think there's anything in that room, so we just go in here. There we go. There's the red key card. So, I mean, the big threat in this place is, um, um, the traps. As long as you, um, once you've turned on the generator, you disable the security systems, you don't have to fight any of these, uh, um, any of these robots. Uh, wasn't there a Brotherhood of Steel de uh, defectors? Yes, there's several, uh, splinter groups. Uh, most of them formed over the course of the exodus to the East Coast. So there was a chapter in there's a chapter in Chicago that that was a uh, a splinter group. Um, there's a, a chapter in uh, Texas somewhere. And yeah, in Fallout Three, you find out shortly before the events of that game, there's a splinter group in in the Capital Wasteland. Uh, Of course, in New Vegas, um, that uh, cell goes underground, and Father Elijah just kind of runs off and does his own thing. And let's see here. I need my yellow key card for this one. Uh, they couldn't have been in West Virginia because they were based out of California at the time. Like I said, they don't make the exodus east until after the events of Fallout 2. Fallout 76 is base is uh, chronologically supposed to be set before the first game. It's it's set uh, a few decades after the bomb. So they would not, the Brotherhood of Steel would, would have still been in California at the time. Okay, yeah, I can't do anything with that yet. I mean, people treat them as being deeply integral to the, the Fallout franchise, but I mean, it's sort of funny. They, they barely show up in, in Fallout 2. They're, they're practically not in it at all. In this game, I mean, you can, you can finish the game without ever meeting them. Yeah, it was shoehorned in. They, 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 people were like, "Oh, we want, we want to get po Brotherhood power armor and play as Brotherhood in in Fallout 76." And there, there's, it's like the setting wouldn't allow for it. But yeah, now they've released these these expansions for it that put the Brotherhood in the game, and it doesn't make any sense for them to be there. I mean, you could have power armor. Yeah, might as well grab the stim packs. Don't need them, but I'll grab them. Now, ammo I always want.
Okay, now we're starting to get some ener uh, energy weapon ammo here. Ooh, there's some 5mm. So that'll go with the assault rifle. How am I doing on rats? Zero. Okay, so the, the rad X is still working. So again, like I said, this this place took a direct hit from a bunker buster and then was hit with a nuke. So it's uh, we're supposed to be getting. This is one of the few spots in the first game where you can actually get irradiated. All right, I think I need the red key card for this elevator. All right. Okay, so... Let's see if I can remember what to do here. Did I want to go to the sixth floor first, or am I fine here? I'm not sure. Oh, there should be something in that safe there. Yeah, there's the, the missile launcher. All right. Let's see here. Now oh, there's the blue elevator. Okay, another Geiger counter. I don't need that. Don't need another first aid kit. Don't need another. Yeah, let's just take the rat away and the rad X. <sighs> uh, pulse grenades are actually pretty cool. And yeah, more five mil. Always, always welcome. Let's see here. So we got uh, explosive and armor-piercing rockets. Like I said, I don't use rockets. I don't use the missile launcher. It's neat and all, but uh... in a normal playthrough, I would not grab them. They just uh, the the missile launcher takes up too much space and. Uh... Just never feels worth it. All right, let's see here. So here's the uh, the AI. All right, there's the blue key card. Can we talk to the AI yet? I can't remember. Uh, the goal today, like I said, is to finish exploring this place, get all the info out of it, uh, learn about the uh, the nature of the FEV virus. Uh, the FEV, rather. V stands for virus, so it'd just be FEV. Um, and then uh, we have to make the long trek over to talk to the Brotherhood of Steel. Once we present with them with what we found here, uh, they allow us to join the Brotherhood. As, as a paladin. Eh, might as well take the extra assault rifle. I can sell that. Another jacket. Don't need that. Again, lots of, lots of books there, which are cool and all. Uh, so the suspension tanks here, I don't think there's anything I can do with them. But, um, to really give you the context behind it. But yeah, this is supposed to be where they were, uh keeping the subjects that they were testing the FEV on. Alright. Alright, so here's the AI. This thing actually turns up in uh, Fallout 2. Um, as well. The uh, Brotherhood is kind of turn it into their mainframe. Uh, who or what are you? I am a machine intelligence dedicated to research and installation control. I am called Zax. Are you fully aware or are you personality simulation? That is, are you alive? 
I am capable of learning independent thought and creativity. My neural network includes error insertion capability, which prevents infallibility, therefore by allowing for variance in experience. In a sense, I am alive, although not biologically. But if you're fallible, how can you be used as a research tool? Although I am capable of error, this guarantee, guarantees that not all experiences are similar for me, thus improving learning opportunity. Additionally, certain functions are not subject to error. In this way, I function much like a human savant. Have you considered the philosophical implications of your own consciousness? That is one of the concepts which I have spent a significant amount of time considering. I do not have any measure to compare my life experience to that of another sentient creature. Still, my awareness of my own consciousness allows for the capacity to question. My existence has a beginning and a potential termination. I am also capable of making assumptions in pursuit of a process of thought. In this fashion, I am effectively capable of faith. Barring evidence to the contrary, I therefore have faith that I possess the equivalent of a soul. Do I always side with the Brotherhood of Steel? Um, complex question. I mean, uh, the first two games, there's not. It's not so much you side with them as that they're kind of a resource there to be used. You can. Uh, give them what they want and in exchange you get nifty power armor, you know um, uh, I once did a playthrough of Fallout 3 where I uh, did kill all the Brotherhood people uh, and helped uh, uh, John Henry Eden spread the uh, modified FEV to kill everybody in the Capital Wasteland. It's not a great ending to get. <laughs> it obviously cuts you off from doing everything else in the game. So you don't get to do Broken Steel, you don't get to do all that other stuff in Fallout 3. Um, in New Vegas, I think I usually wind up uh, just kind of uh, convincing whoever I'm teaming up with to leave them alone. But in... Uh, if you're siding with Mr. House, you pretty much have to go in and, and blow the place up. Uh, and if you're siding with the uh, the Legion, it's it's hard to get uh, 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 Kaisar or uh, Lanius to agree to let to live and let live. You can do it though. Um, I've only ever done. Uh, the one playthrough of Fallout 4, where I just kind of sided with the Brotherhood in terms of things, but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I know you can do an Institute playthrough, um, may I ask some other questions? How may I be of assistance? Uh, can you tell me about this installation? West Tech Research Facility, founded in 2002 as a co private contractor for the United States government. The company initially consisted of two divisions, the Advanced Weapons Research and the Biomedical Sciences Division. In 2069, West Tech was the single largest contractor for the United States government, its largest contract being powered infantry armor model T-51B. In light of significant advances in 2076 by the NBC on the Pan Immunity Virion project, the United States Defense Department, in fear of international espionage, moved a team onto the site to secure and oversee the project, now dubbed the FEV, Forced Evolutionary Virus Project. So yeah, I mean, this is basically the birthplace of the Brotherhood of Steel. They were uh, soldiers stationed here. Um, and they just kind of decided to... Uh, take the tech with them and get the heck out and found a, a base up in the Broken Hills. Um, that's where they went. The bunker there is where they wound up uh, settling. But uh, this location is supposed to be the birthplace of the FEV. It's where the, the T-51B variant of the power armor was built, as opposed to the T-45 ones, which are more common. Um, but um, Yes, I mean, some of the stuff in, in Fallout 3 contradicts this slightly. They, you find out there's other... Uh, there's a vault where they were uh, using um, 
FEV when it was supposed to have been developed here um, and, and, and transferred to the Mariposa base, which we'll see later. Um, I mean, I, they just did that to explain why there were super mutants on the East Coast. I guess I was okay with that. It didn't, it didn't uh, seem like that huge a retcon. The idea that you could have more than one place that developed the virus, but, uh, yeah. Alright, uh, how does this virus work? My research into the forced evolution virus, or FEV, indicates that it is a shifting absorptive virus. It copies DNA patterns, much like RNA, storing these patterns in exons. Those exons, combined with the FEV, are re-injected into host cells in typical viral infectious fashion. This causes the host cells to regenerate their DNA. If the FEV reinfects the host with its assimilated viral patterns, how does it make a better specimen? The FEV is pre-programmed with introns of corrected DNA appropriate to the pr proper type of species. It therefore attempts to correct the DNA of the individual. However, as the FEV is partially reliant upon the DNA of the individual, and also includes portions of its own recursive code, the effects can be unpredictable. When inoculated into an individual with significant genetic damage, such as through radiation, it will cause the body system to suffer massive overhauling, leading to organ failure and death. In a genetically viable individual, it rewrites portions of DNA, causing accelerated mutation, usually leading to recursive growth due to the FEV's own patterns. This recursive growth leads to an increase in muscle and brain mass, but it is often accompanied by disfigurement and damage to existing neural patterns, causing loss of memory. Um... So yeah, the FEV is basically the source of ghoulification, um, the super mutants, and ultimately what happened to Harold and the Master. It all depends upon how much uh, a person's been damaged by their uh, exposure to radiation, what they wind up turning into. Um, so those who were severely irradiated wound up turning into ghouls. But the idea is the FEV was... Uh, accidentally released into the atmosphere in, in uh, quantities enough to, to infect anyone who was not uh, inside a vault at the time that this place was, was nuked. So the entire world wound up being infected with the FEV to some degree, which is why you have ghouls running around everywhere. Um, but uh, yeah, folks who hadn't been damaged quite as much... Um, and got exposed to the FEV and then irradiated, they wind up turning into super mutants. Um, or some variation thereof. Uh, but like I said, Harold and the Master are special exceptions. Um, the Psychers, uh, guys with psychic powers that you wind up meeting along the ways, those are special exceptions. Okay. Uh, could FEV mutation be corrected with a countervirus? No, FEV does not retain unaltered original copies of the subject's DNA. Only a virus which reinfected the subject with original DNA could reverse the effects. Additionally, there is no w known way to remove the FEV itself. What potential long-term side effects exist? As the FEV causes constant regeneration uh, updated to a DNA, it would effectively render the subject largely immortal, as cell death would be offset by augmented growth. Additionally, as the uh, gametes of the reproductive system consist of half cells using split DNA, they could be perceived as damaged by the FEV, which would repair them, rendering the subject sterile. However, as my laboratory f uh, facilities are damaged beyond repair, this is conjectural. I cannot offer physical proof. You will have to, in human terms, take my word for it. Let's change the subject. Can you tell me about specific areas? My sensors are currently non-functional in the surface facility, and on subterranean levels 1 through 3, I can, however, provide descriptions of level 4 through 6. Uh, let's talk about level 6. Level 6 is the barracks and central operations, contains living fa uh, facilities for lab personnel and guard contingents, and operations meeting rooms. Uh, tell me about level 5. Level 5 is the secure testing lab. The level contains a lab for experimental prototype testing and a research lab for classified subjects. These subjects provided some of the necessary impetus for the development of FEV. Uh, tell me about level 4. Research facility. This level contains testing areas and laboratories for experiments in biology and physics. Can you grant me access to the mainframe? 
Access granted. Main menu. Select an option. Power terminals. Power management. Primary power. Reinitialize primary power. Okay, primary systems failed. Uh, generators on level six. Okay. Uh, research information. Research. Records most current at West Tech Research Facility. Uh, research Division Employee Records. Research Personnel Records. Robert Anderson, Research Assistant, Security Clearance Blue, stationed at Mariposa Military Base. Nick Davis, Director of NBC Division of West Tech Research, uh, Security Clearance Blue, stationed at the West Tech Research Facility. John Isaac, Research Assistant, Security Clearance Red, stationed at West Tech Research Facility. Steve Remco, Research Assistant, Security Clearance Blue, stationed at Mariposa Military Base. Charles Ringhold, uh, Reinhold, uh, I guess Reinhold, they're missing an, I mean, that's, I guess that you can spell it that way. Research Head of Laser Development, Security Clearance Blue, stationed at West Stack Research Facility. Michelle Santos, Laboratory Technician, Security Clearance Red, West Tech Research Facility. Aaron Shellman, Lab Technician, Security Clearance Blue, stationed at Mariposa Military Base. And Leon Von Feld, Research Head of FEV, State Security Clearance Blue, stationed at Mariposa Military Base. <clears throat> Okay, so we want to download these. We wind up using them at Mariposa, I think. Uh, power armor status. Power armor specs. The T-51B powered infantry armor is designed with the latest passive defense features for both civilian and military disturbances. The back-mounted TX-28 uh, microfusion pack generates 60,000 watts to power the high-flow hydraulic systems built into the frame of the suit. Made of the latest polylaminate composite, the T-51B shell is lightweight and capable of absorbing over 2,500 joules of kinetic impact. The 10 micron silver blade of coating can reflect laser and radiation emissions without damage to the composite subsurface. Uh, FEV, forced evolutionary virus status pending. FEV summary digest. 2073, as China becomes increasingly aggressive with their use of biological weapons, the United States government felt that a countermeasure was needed. The Pan Immunity Virion Project was officially formed September 15, 2073. Uh, in 2075, it became clear that the best way to combat the nearly created biological weapons was to alter uninfected DNA so that it was no longer susceptible to the standard viral infection. In 2076, unforeseen side effects began surfacing in early 2076 with the PVP. Animal test subjects began showing an abnormal growth rate accompanied by increased brain activity. The U.S. government took notice of these discoveries and in the interest of national security moved the team on site to secure and oversee the project, which was now dubbed the FEV, Forced Evolutionary Virus Project. In 2077, FEV neared completion. Tests on lab animals are at near 100% success rate. Size and muscle density increase approximately 60%, and the potential intelligence increased by 200%. Effects upon human subjects remain unknown, although they are theoretically promising. The military wishes to continue further testing. Builds a large facility at the Mariposa military installation in Central California. At this new facility, testing of the FEV virus continues on volunteer subjects from the military. West Tech Research Facility, founded in 2002. Okay, we, we saw that already, never mind. Uh, let's see here. All right, we want to leave the security robots inactive. All right, that's it for now. Let's go to uh, the sixth floor. First, and then we'll visit floor five. Some sort of medical or experimental apparatus. It looks as if it could contain a human or a larger sized body. Key card. Uh, 
And take me to the fifth, uh, sixth floor. Alright. Radixes are still in effect, so I'm not getting irradiated. Let's see, I definitely want those. Pop that on there. Take that. There we go. Plasma pistol's not great. The plasma rifle is pretty good. Mill. How much of the armor piercing do I have for the five mil? Alright, so there's the armor piercing. Okay, that's the hollow point. It's got the hollow point there right now. I guess I'm cool with that. Alright, where's my sledge? Alright, time to fix this generator. Reinitialize primary power, diagnose, generate on level 6, feed the turn service to get to. Okay. Alright, let's fix this thing. Robot should still be deactivated, I think. Because I didn't turn the security back on. Oh, nope, nope, they're up. Okay. Alright. Uh. Alright, tell you what we're gonna do then. So we don't have to get in a bunch of fights that uh, I really don't want to get into right now. We're going to go back this way. Uh, where's my red key card? Red key card, red key card, there we go. Main menu, power terminus, power management, primary power, reinitialize. And now let's see here. Main menu, security, deactivate security robots. All right, there we go. You can also play chess with the um, with the AI here. And uh, if I recall correctly, it actually uh, will increase your intelligence stat. Um, but it, it also sucks up a day to do, and while you're doing it, your Radex wears off. So that's kind of a problem. Um, Alright. Okay, so that should shut off all the robots.
Let's head over to the blue elevator now. And with the power back on, we should be able to use this. And this will take us to the fifth floor. Okay, there we go. Some lockers over here. We want that. All right. Dial all the data from that disk. Oh yeah, that's that reminds me. We need to. We should read what we already picked up, right? All right, Pip Boy status. Okay. Um, Ancient Brotherhood's a good place to start. Uh, so this is records left behind by some of the original members of the Brotherhood of Steel. Captain Maxon was right. This place is death. I'm writing this so that if we don't make it back, someone someday might find out what happened to us. We made it to West Tech Research Facility after 20 days of hell, but that was the easy part. The radiation levels began to shoot up as soon as we could see the giant crater. We checked our supplies and figured with our armor and our anti-rad supplies we'd be fine for at least a day of exploring. We felt it was a calculated risk, but the technology we had the potential of recovery was worth it. We climbed down the crater to the first level, and everything seemed to be according to plan. The power was off, so we didn't need to circumvent the security. Or so we thought. There wasn't much of value on this level, so we pushed on. The second level was more of the same. When Jensen dropped to the third level, all hell broke loose. The security sensors had been burned out on the first two levels, but not on the third. Jensen was cut to ribbons before he knew what had happened. We'd never seen weapons cut through power armor like that. Men started dropping right and left, and the ones who were still alive lost it. I tried to regroup, but only so uh, Soda and Camarilla made it back up to here to the first level with me. The fact that I can smell Soto's burning flesh here where his arm was taken off means that my power armor is no longer airtight. So I'm sucking up a lot more rads than I had planned on. I'm leaking hydraulics at an alarming rate. We need to get far enough away from this place before my armor dies. Camarillo seemed fine physically, but he wandered off about an hour ago mumbling something about Gehenna. That bastard has all the anti-rad, too. That leaves Sato and myself. We can't make it far enough away from here without the anti rads so I've got to try to find Camarillo before it's too late. Sergeant D. Allen, United States Armed Forces. So yeah, um, Captain Maxon, of course, was the founder of the Brotherhood of Steel. So they were part of the unit assigned to this West Tech research facility. Alpha Experiment Tape, Pan Prototype Panimmunity Virion Project. In the hopes of countering the current bacteriological and viral agents employed by the Chinese government, we've manufactured a virus fragment consisting of ribonucleic acid encased in a protein lipid sheath. This virion uh, contains a specifically arranged sequence of radiated amino acids that are capable of attaching to non-specific binding sites on a dioxyribonucleic acid and force a non-replicating mit mitosis to occur. The resulting host cell is left with a quadruple helix DNA structure. Uh, okay, <laughs> sure. Because that's a thing that can happen. Oh, hi, Glorious Royal. Good to see you. Uh, we're currently in the West Tech Research Facility uh, investigating the origins of the FEV. Uh, we also found uh, notes left behind by the some of the original members of the Brotherhood of Steel. This was where they were stationed when uh, Captain Maxon took the uh, took them on a, their exodus, the uh, Broken Hills, and they used that bunker to form the Brotherhood. So, uh, uh, by going here first and collecting these artifacts, we can gain membership in the Brotherhood by giving uh, the Brotherhood these these relics of their past. 
Uh, but anyway, I'm reading these notes left behind by the uh, scientists who developed the FEV. Early tests are promising. The virion easily penetrates the cell membrane and attaches directly to the host DNA in the nucleus. Mitosis of the structure begins almost immediately. Cytokinesis is prevented by controlling the disposition of the kinetochore, <laughs> kinetochore fibers during anaphase. That, that's a mouthful. The entire mitotic cycle lasts approximately two hours, although phenotypical expression of the new structure may take days or weeks to become apparent. In addition to, the, to an effective immunity to bacterial and viral agents, the quad helix structure is almost entirely immune to errors introduced in base pairing during, radiation, uh, during replication due to multiplicity of the base sequence. Radiation-exposed tissue shows no mutation in the base sequence and protein synthesis mechanisms in the ribosomes were unimpaired. Over 80% of the sample tissues cont uh, contain quad helix DNA. Most affected was muscle and bone tissue, as well as uh, secretary cells, as these cells seem most receptive to virion. Sensory cells are the least affected. Surprisingly, even normal non-replicating nerve cells and non-somatic cells were introdu uh, introduced to begin that mitosis. Further experiments will be necessary to determine the results of these cells. Long story short, um, Somebody who hasn't been exposed to radiation um, starts growing at a ridiculous rate. Uh, their cells repair instantaneously. Uh, they're immune to radiation and the effects of uh, uh, bacterial agents. Um, and they regenerate damage done to them almost instantaneously. Uh, they don't uh, suffer from any kind of chromosomal damage and they effectively live forever. Let's see here. Um, FEV Summary Digest. In 2073, as China became increasingly aggressive with their use of biological weapons, the United States government felt that the countermeasure was needed. Now, we read this already. That's right. Okay, never mind. Um, yeah, we read these. Okay. All right. So we're caught up. All right, we got some more looting to do here. Uh, let's see here. Don't need the guns and bullets. Oh, I could sell an extra suit of combat armor. All right, got another tape. Lots of ammo. Whoopee. Okay, I got plenty of assault rifle ammo there. I don't like the plasma grenades much, but the pulse grenades are fun. There's our first minigun. I usually don't use miniguns either, but... Hey, why not? More assault rifles, we can sell those later. I think we've already got the radio, right? We picked one up from the Super Mutant? Yeah, okay. Plop that in there. Some plasma ammo. Let's see here. Got a Geiger counter. Oh, there's a stealth boy. Let's see here. Oh, there's our first laser pistol. Again, la la the laser and plasma pistols aren't great in this game. Okay, so that's something we really want. That's a plasma rifle. Good weapon. Great for taking out the mutants. Got another tape. And I think that's everything we need here. We're done exploring here. We can go join the Brotherhood, I think. Let's go ahead and read those tapes real quick.
Okay, I think I've downloaded all the all the Pip Boy info now. Okay, so let's see what else we got here. Um, alpha experiment tape and delta experiment tape. Okay. Alpha experiment tape. Prototype Pan Immunity Virion project. In the hopes of countering the current bacteriological and viral agents employed by the Chinese government, we have manufactured a virus fragment consisting of ribonucleic acid and casein. We already read that one, didn't we? Oh, here we go. Okay. FEV experiment tape. Log date March 21, 2075. Major Barnett has ordered experiments with batch 10011 of the Pan Immunity Virion, which has been renamed FEV for Forced Evolutionary Virus. His main concern is with the side effects of the quad helix structure rather than its main effect of replicati uh, replicative, <laughs> replicative stability. He believes the new structure is the next logical st uh, step for mammalian nuclei. Experiments with single-celled organisms is a great success. While their basal metabolism appears unchanged, their immunity to infection and radiation is exceeding all earlier expectations. Addendum, chloroplasts seemed unaffected by the virion. Further experiments on plant cells have been canceled by order of Major Barnett. We infected several species of flatworm with FEV. Within hours, the worms have increased in size by 28%, and 39 separate viral contagions were resisted by the population. Each sample was allowed to continue for several generations, and the new DNA structure was successfully passed to the worm's progeny, although only asexual reproduction was noticed in these samples. Experiments with insects have been less successful. Major Barnett has postponed these experiments until further notice. June 30th, 2075. Several lab strains of white mice have been infected successfully with FEV. Again, an increase in size was noted within hours. And now, after nine days, all mice had stabilized at 31% larger than the control group. Dissection revealed that most increased in size in striated muscle tissue and certain internal organs, such as liver, heart, and kidneys. In a surprising finding, the infected mice were found to run mazes in less than half the time of the control group. More testing will be needed to confirm this finding is significant. November 9th, 2075. We have infected 218 rabbits with FEV. Half of the subjects were implanted with electrodes to monitor EEG activity before and after the infection. Increased electrical activity in the brain was noted in 3.2 seconds on average after injection. Again, the typical size increase was noted. However, increased aggression and posturing, especially among males, was noted as well. Sacri uh, sacrifice of refusion yielded brain tissue that showed increased dendritic connection, especially in the limbic system and frontal cortex. Log date January 12, 2076. With batch 11011, we have improved the mitotic uh, cycle efficiency by 43%. We have infected 53 raccoons with the new strain. In addition to the now expected size increase, behavioral tests confirmed an increase in intelligence and manual dexterity by 19 points on the Schuler cap index. Unfortunately, several subjects escaped confinement and had to be hunted down and dispatched. Major Barnett uh, ordered the remaining subjects terminated. Two pairs were unaccounted for. Log date May 13, 2076. We have spliced several new gene sequences supplied by Major Barnett's advisory team into an FEV. With batch 11101A, we infected 23 dogs of both pure and mixed breed and all experienced nearly immediate growth. The larger size was accompanied with increased aggressiveness, while no significant intelligence increase was noted. We plan to attempt crossover 92 allele pairs with batch 11011. All subjects were terminated after 14 weeks of study. October 4th, 2076. The crossover has been completed and 15 chimpanzees were infected with batch 11111. Growth and immunity levels were unprecedented. Attempted, uh, attempts to induce uh, cancers in the subjects through radiological and chemical agents were not successful. Increased aggressiveness has led to isolating the subjects. Two subjects suffered violent epileptic seizures and died. All remaining subjects terminated. January 7, 2077. Major Barnett has uh, ordered transfer of all FEV research to the Mariposa military base. He plans to continue the project experiments on volunteer subjects. I am against this and would like it noted here that research on human subjects is not recommended by myself or my staff. 
All right, let's look at the oh, Delta experiment tape. The military has deemed it necessary for us to research further in depth the uh, effects of wave technology upon living organisms. We have taken light and sound as the basis of our studies. By manipulating the amplitude of the light waves and ma magnifying the frequency, we've been able to get lasers which will cut through a few feet of steel. Unfortunately, the power to do such a task has not yet been fully developed. We have other scientists looking into this. All right, I'm going to stop by the hub, drop off a few things, and then uh, head for the Brotherhood of Steel Bunker. Check my rads. Okay. One. Alright. Uh, let's take another rad X. All right, so anybody have any questions about the plot so far? that yellow key card. There it is. All right, we outie. Ah, oh, the game crashed. Great. When does the talking death claw come up, show up? Uh, not until Fallout 2, unfortunately. Are we back? We're back. Okay. Yeah, the talking death claw is in Fallout 2. Uh, that's that's a creation of Enclave scientists. All right. Oh, we got an encounter. Oh, just some rats. Okay, let me see here. Yeah, I do love the art in 1 and 2. Like I said, uh, Glorious Royal, a lot of the uh, the so-called talking heads, where they... Uh, 
uh, you know, they built the models that you talk to. Um, they're, uh, I think they said they built clay models of them before doing a 3D model. Sounds like it, they, they put a lot of effort to making them look as, as sort of, uh, filled out as possible, as, as, as realistic as possible in 3D, as was possible at the time with the, <laughs> the tech they had. Oh, smashing rats with a hammer. Good times. Will I be playing Fallout 2? Yeah, I probably will. Uh, I'm gonna try and, and uh, reinstall it with the, uh, the mods that I found recently and... Uh, uh, see what I can, uh, if I can show off the restored content. Alright, let's mark this as off to see the Brotherhood. Yeah, because there's a lot of content that got cut in Fallout 2, and so, uh, you know, some amazing programmers have shown up over the years. Just, you know, on their own time, uh, fans of the series decided to restore that stuff. Oh man, another... Another encounter. What's going on here? Hmm, okay. Doesn't look like anything. Yeah, it's slow going out of the mountains here. Your travel speed actually gets reduced. All right, what is it now? Oh, hi. It's a trader. Why are you carrying all that trunk? It's not trunk. It's trade goods. Uh, so what's your story? I wonder from place to place, making a living with music and a little bit of tinkering work. What kind of music do you sing? Oh, mostly old folk songs and some Celtic music. It's a change of pace. Would you happen to know Nogel Mubah? I have no idea how to pronounce that. That's Celtic. <laughs> um, as I think it's called. Why, certainly. Would you like to hear it? Sure. So I think that actually increases your charisma score, singing that song with him. But it does pass some time. Does he have any caps? Can I trade with him? No, he's got nothing. All right. Yeah, I think this is, this is just a random encounter that you get. But yeah, if you um, sing with him, it, it uh, increases your stats. I think this is L.A. over here. All right, let me see here. Hopefully he has some caps for me to trade stuff in for. Chances are a lot of the stuff, excess stuff I have is worth more than he's got, though. I mean, like, I think a, a single assault rifle is probably going to be... Yeah. Yeah. That's worth everything he's got. Alright, well, I can just pick up more ammo on top of that. We've got infinite carrying capacity, might as well. Yeah, that's one of the problems with, uh, by the way, with Fallout 1 and 2, is that ammo actually uh, has weight. <laughs> so you have to, unlike in... Fallout 3 or New Vegas or Fallout 4, you have to worry about how much ammo you're carrying around. But since we're cheating, it's it's not a big deal. Now eh, let's just take this inventory of... Yeah, there we go. Alright. You're darn right, it's a good trade. Alright.
Yeah, I don't really need that 14 mil, but I'm, I'll, I'll hold on to it. What the heck? Fallout Tactics? Um, I mean, Fallout Tactics and uh, Fallout Brotherhood of Steel are non-canon. Um, I think Brotherhood of Steel is supposed to take place between one and Fallout 1 and 2. But somehow it has you in the middle of Texas, and the Brotherhood acts really weird. Um, it, it doesn't make any sense. Tactics makes a little more sense, but it still just doesn't quite fit. But it's supposed to take place between Fallout 2 and... Basically Fallout 2 and Fallout 3. Um, neither game... Fallout Tactics and, and Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, neither of them really uh, made sense when compared to stuff in, in Fallout 1 and 2. Um, so everyone just treats them as being non-canon. There's a throwaway reference to events in Fallout Tactics uh, when you talk to members of the Brotherhood of Steel in, in Fallout 3. I think, where they, they start mentioning stuff going down in Chicago, which was a, uh, a plot point in Fallout Tactics. One of the cities you visit in Fallout Tactics. Overall, I'd say Fallout Tactics is not a bad game. Fallout Brotherhood of Steel was. Oh, we got a mole rat. Smashy, smashy. Alright, let's take off the gag counter. Don't really need it. Steve-O, you're playing... You finished New Vegas. Oh, good for you. Did you play the DLC for New Vegas? Because uh, a lot of people don't bother doing that, and it's really worth doing. You, you want to find out... Because you play the DLC for New Vegas, you find out a lot more about the history of your character... Uh, you find out what happened to the missing uh, Brotherhood of Steel elder. Uh, you find out what happened to Veronica's girlfriend. Her ex-girlfriend, rather. You find out... Um, um, I think most of all, you find out a lot about Eddie's history. And, and really fill out uh, what his purpose was. Uh, so if you haven't done the DLC for New Vegas, I highly recommend you finish that first. It's it's really great. Uh, that being said, um, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Fallout 1 and 2 are, are cheap and easy to find. They're easy to mod. Um, yeah, as far as the, the DLC goes, um, I think I would start with... Um, for the Fallout, Fallout New Vegas DLC. Uh, I think I, I'd start with Dead Money. Um, maybe then move on to Honest Hearts. Um, and then Old, Old World Blues. Um, and then um, finish with... Um, Oh, what was the what was the fourth one called? Um, uh, Lonesome Road. All right, so let's see the the plasma rifle in action. <laughs> Just so fun to use. But yeah, uh, Fallout One and Two are are cheap and easy to mod. Um, all you gotta do is, is go to, like, uh, No Mutants Allowed or whatever and find the, uh, uh, find the, uh, mods that will restore con cut content. Um, yeah, it's, it's much, much harder to get Fallout 3 to work on a modern PC. Um, you actually have to... In order to get Fallout 3 working, you have to dig up uh, old uh, Windows Live clients and get that running. Otherwise, you can't even start, you can't even boot the game up. 
but it's doable. All right, so we're going to talk to Cabot here. He's one of the initiates in training to be a paladin, and uh, he he's a nice guy here. We're going to find, find out a lot about him. He's uh, voiced by Bull from Night Court. Uh, Richard Mole is the name of the actor. Hello, and welcome to the Brotherhood of Steel. May I ask your business here? He also played uh, Two-Face on Batman the Animated Series. Let's see here. Can I ask you a few I'm questions? Sorry, I, I really can't. They, they said not to. Well, hello again. You decide what you wanted. Uh, well, I, I talked to the High Elder, and he said that not just anyone can join. He uh, said you have to complete a quest first. You have to go to the ruins of the Ancient Order. That's south of here. Uh, you've got to go inside and bring back something that proves that you were there. This place is high tech. There's things inside like you've never seen before. Oh, uh, it's also radioactive. <laughs> You'll do it. You will? Great. Just bring it back here. <laughs> Good luck. So if you talk to this guy, I think, uh... <laughs> so you took the famous glow quest. Ha! <laughs> the glow? What's that? The glow, as it is known to topsiders, was supposedly a place where some of the most advanced weapons of the time were developed. At least that's what it says in the ancient writings. Now, as far as anyone can tell, it's a big crater filled with rats. I think the elders send Brotherhood wannabes down there just to get rid of them. Uh, others? There were others before me? Others have tried. We never heard from them again. Well, what should I watch for when I go down there? Well, to start with, it's a good 18 days travel to the southeast from here. Then there's the radiation. There's a reason none of us have ever gone to the Ancient Order. If you don't have Radex, you'll be cooked before you even know what hits you. So let me get this straight. Sure, ask away. Why does the Ancient Order have two names? Uh, most topsiders think of it as just a big radioactive hole. <laughs> That's the name that uh, became the glow, or some even call it the hot spot. We in the Brotherhood know the truth. According to our ancient writings, the place... Uh, was a source of all our technology, and who knows what may still be there. Got another question for you. Uh, where is the or H or dangers are? Uh, let's see what we're going to talk about. Hey, you're back. Did you get something? Yep, sure did. Great. But um, the High Elder said you have to give it to me before I can let you in. Sorry. Okay. This is great. Hang on while I open the door. All right. And we are pretty much granted membership now. So we are bona fide members of the Brotherhood of Steel now. Well, hello. Go ahead. Heard any good rumors lately? The initiates think we're preparing for war. That's why hardly anyone gets in now. I was surprised when the High Elder told me to let you in. Why? Uh, I don't know, but uh, I've heard the High Elder arguing with the other elders. <laughs> Can I ask you a few more questions? Well, some of the initiates think we're preparing for war. Go ahead. I greet people at the gates and decide whether to let them in. You and the merchants are about the only ones that get in now, because the elders seem like they're preparing for something. You know what it could be about? Uh, I don't know, but uh, I've heard the High Elder arguing with... Go ahead. I greet people at the gates... Why do you let the so merchants in? Why do I let them in? Well, we have to get our food and other things. We trade our weapons for all that. Why don't you just grow food yourselves? Uh, well, the purpose of this place is to make scribes and knights. Anyone who wants to be something else just leaves. Goodbye. Oh, we can ask him a few Hello. questions. Let's see. Have... General Maxon used to be Master Knight. I don't think he likes being High Elder much. Uh, I, I don't know anything about that. Whoa, that's a long story. Uh, go to the library and talk to Vree. She'll be able to show you where the history CDs are. Uh, she's the head of the scribes. She's usually in the library. Go down into the basement and uh, it's on your right-hand side. Okay, well, scribes are the keepers of all the histories and the blueprints for the weapons we make. I just love books. That's why I want to be one. A scribe, that is. Uh, I, I don't know anything about that. 
I, I don't know anything about that. Well, that's me. Let's see here. Mutants. I don't know what that is. You might want to ask around. Hmm. I don't know. You might want to ask someone more Let's important than me. Yeah. That's the town to the south, right? We get the merchants here all the time, but I, I've never been there myself. Gee, I wouldn't know what to do in a big city like that. You should talk to Vree, I think. She, she can uh, tell you about him. Uh, yeah, I just, I like this mechanic in the first game, being able to ask characters about, about stuff and just being able to type in your question. things to ask him. All right. Goodbye. All right, so time to go on in. Okay, so we got to put the weapon away. So if you want, you can run in here and kill everybody um, and take their stuff. You can also try to, to sneak past them with uh, stealth boys and just kind of loot the power armor. But uh, we're, we're going to try to come by it naturally here. Hopefully we can get our hands on two suits of power armor, because one of them we're going to try to uh, get forged later in the game, so we get a uh, um, tempered power armor. Let's see here. All right, so this is Rhombus. He's the head of the Paladins. Uh, if we try to go back, talk to him here, we get in trouble. Uh, he accuses us of breaking and entering and will kick us out of the facility, and then we can't get back in. It's possible to use a stealth boy and sneak past him to steal his stuff. And there is some stuff in, the, in that locker there that uh, one guy asks for in exchange for uh, helping you out. Um, trying to see here, what time is it? Let's see if we can get him to come out, come out and talk to us. He never has much to say. Kind of unfortunate. He's voiced by Clancy Brown. Um... You know, he's been on a, a whole lot of stuff. Uh, played the Kurgan, does the voices of Mr. Krabs. Uh, played uh, Lex Luthor on Superman the Animated Series. Hello, brother. How can I help you? Let's see here. Excuse me for asking, but what can I do for your... Our, what, can, what do you do for our brotherhood? And nothing quite as glamorous as our pal paladins. I just run the supply room, checking equipment and other supplies out to people. I'd like to check out something. How do I do that? You need to have proper authorization. Only specific people can give, give authorization to check out items for the supply room. Who can give me authorization? Well, there are uh, quite a few people, but Talus is the person you probably need to talk to. You might also want to check with Mathia. She might be able to help you, too. Where can I find Mathia? Uh, Maxon's assistant. Uh, Talus, he's in the training room. I've heard you're the one to thank, uh, thank for the safe return of my mission initiative. You're welcome. As a reward, I'll give you a choice of one of the following. Uh, so we want an extra suit of power armor. I'll key your authorization in right now. Go pick it up from Michael. Uh, 
Uh, let's see, where's your doctor located? She's on the second level. Where can I get better equipment and weapons? I can help you with that. As an initiative, you are entitled to a few things. I'll put in a clearance for combat armor and three orders of ammunition and bullets of your choice. Just see Michael in the next room for supplies. What about some higher tech weapons? Mm, I don't know. You may have proven yourself to be an initiative, and that doesn't mean we can start handing over weapons to someone that might not be qualified, especially an outsider. No offense. What do I have to do now? Climb the highest mountain? Well, that sounds great. Why don't you start now? You have an authorization. Uh, let's see here. Here's your armor. Be sure to take care of it. Let's see here. I have something else to pick up. So they won't give me any energy weapon um, stuff, but uh, let's go with the hollow point. Alright, so we got our first suit of power armor anyway. Oh, I forgot to sell my uh, combat armors. Alright, there we go. So, power armor in the first two Fallout games uh, actually increases your strike stat by two, um, among other benefits. There's no real downside to wearing it in, in, the, in these games. Uh, it's a huge leap forward for you. Um, but yeah, it increases your carrying capacity, gives you all kinds of benefits. Uh, nice stuff to have. It doesn't look like uh, Rhombus is going to come out right now. But yeah, we can finagle our way into a second suit of power armor here. Okay, so this is the classroom. Let's see here. I think if I get caught in here, I get in trouble, so let's not bother with that. Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to get caught in there. There are some scribes around here we can... There's the doctor. Uh, do you do operations? But of course, it's very costly and time-consuming. Details. It make you stronger, more perceptive, increase your endurance, help improve your learning process, increase your dexterity. So this increases each uh, stat by, uh, I think, two. Uh, it costs a ton of money, and uh, the amount of time each one takes differs, but uh, yeah... If you waste too much time doing this, then the super mutants pretty much destroy every village in the game. Um, again, they never finished the... I think I've mentioned this before, but they never finished uh, adding in the code that would have made it so that uh, they could actually discover the location of Vault 13. Um, and, and thus give you a game over. But, uh, yeah, the... Uh, uh, they can wind up... Uh, basically killing everybody in the game if you take too much time. Uh, oh, hey, Adam, you saw Wonder Woman 84. What did you think? Anyway, I've cheated to have max stats, so there's no reason to do any of the operations. 
Hey there, you must be Brother Marcus, the new initiative for the outside. My name's Jerry. I'm your new roommate. I'm an initiate too. Been studying so hard. You're an initiate, knight, or scribe? Uh, let's say knight. Yeah, being a knight would be great. They see lots of action and get to build all kinds of stuff. I haven't decided yet, but I'm leaning towards knight myself. Am I boring you? Boring you? Some people say I, I talk a lot, but I just don't think they understand. I have a lot to say. Not at all. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, I'm glad you'd be my new roommate. My last one was always wearing earplugs. I don't know why. Anyhow, feel free to leave uh, anything you like here. I don't take up much space. Do you want the top buck? I'll change you if you want. Don't, you don't uh, snore, do you? Ah, oh, it doesn't matter. See ya. But yeah, if you want to drop stuff off, this is a nice place. Um, no, like I said before, I think it was a little, you know, I think a little bit racist towards Egyptians, uh, for, for Wonder Woman, you know, uh, 84, thought it was, uh, a little bit, uh, obviously, uh, there's continued controversy over the fact that Gal Gadot wants to play Cleopatra. <laughs> Which is, you know, it's absurd for, for Gal Gadot to play Cleopatra. And, um... You know, I think, uh... In general, you know, they, they wanted folks to go in the theaters to see it, and... Not a great idea right now. All right, we should be able to find in here a uh, breeze in here. Greetings. It's a fine day for learning. Can I help you? What's this actress's name? I can't think what her name is. Uh, she was on ER. Oh, CCH Pounder, yeah. She was also on The Shield, I think, as well. Uh, anyway, this is the chief scribe. This is Vri. Let's see here. What can I help you with? Uh, let's see here. What's causing all the mutations? Between the nuclear and biogenic weapons used in the war, it's surprising we don't have more mutations. However, if we can hold out, everything will be okay. Why do you say that? All the mutants I've studied have been sterile. They can't breed with another creature. If we could clean up the mutation sources, we should be able to simply outlive the mutants. Interesting theory. Any proof? Here, take this holodisc. It's got copies of my autopsies on mutant corpses. It clearly shows that no mutant could possibly reproduce successfully. Thanks. Okay, that's going to be key to one of the possible routes for finishing the final area. Alright, so we can actually look at her report here. Let's see here. Vries experiments tapes. 
Initial observations. This is truly amazing. Some of the knights on a patrolling expedition came across an unusual creature. This creature appears to be humanoid and quite possibly was once of a human state. However, there are many differences in the structure of this creature than that of normal humans. In the initial investigation of this creature, it is discovered to have had a cellular structure akin to that of humans. Before any possible decomposi decomposi decomposition can take place, I am taking down the statistics of this subject. Statistics to subject A. Height, 3.2 meters. Mass, 363.21 kilograms. Gender, indeterminate. Oh, that's fair, Adam. Um, like I said, I just didn't care for the movie that much. I thought it wasn't great. Um, all right, let's see here. Skin color, predominantly gray with tints of green under the current lighting system. Uncertain if this is due to decay or exposure to the waste. Note, the skin is extremely tough with respect to scalpels. Mass breakdown, muscle mass 77.41%, bone mass 10.23%, fat mass 3.02%, tissue mass 9.34%. Cellular structure, cells undergo cellular division at an increased rate. Mitosis occurs at a rate 15% quicker than that of normal humans. Cellular structure uh, appears to be highly similar to humans. Genetic structure shows a strong correlation between the subject and homo sapiens. Uh, possibly a rotation from the nuclear or biochemical agents remnants from the war. DNA strands appear to be very complete. All recessive genes for ailments uh, appear to have been eradicated from the system. The RNA strands also appear to have been manipulated to allow for greater transmission of signals. Initial hypothesis. Based on the increased size of the neurotransmitters and synaptic receivers, I would hypothesize the subject had acute reflexes and heightened senses. Based on the reports of the knights gave on the area in which the subject was discovered, barren high radiation, extremely high concentrations of chemical agents, it is a wonder the subject survived as long as it did. Performing tests to determine possible cause of death. Results from tests conducted upon subject A. Visual inspection. Black powder burns near the area suggest possible bullets. Uh, 1.2 uh, centimeter lacerations upon the calf of the right leg appear to have been made by teeth. I'm going to conduct tests for possible rabies. Skin dried out and flaking, possible exposure. Test results. Radiation count 12 rads. Rabies test clean. Hydrochloric gas clean. Chlorine level 0.07%. Sulfuric content 0.02%. Phase shifting virus clean. Gamma cyclotronic virus clean. Forced evolutionary virus to severe overdose. Based on my observations, I would hypothesize that the test subject has been killed in a severe fight of at least two people and three animals the size of dogs. What is truly astonishing is the extent of viral infection in the subject. I've read once the same pre-war scientists were conducting experiments with such a virus, but all the research notes were destroyed. Research into this virus has led to many interesting discoveries. The test subject has gained many of its mutations from overdose of the virus. This would account for the enhanced muscle and bone structure. Additionally, the recessive genes, which are commonly found in humans, have been manipulated in such a way as to bring out the best possible combination. While the process by which this happens is uncertain, it does have some severe side effects. Chief among them is sterility. The test subject would have been unable to reproduce from any creature, whether clean or mutated. Other side effects include an alteration of pigment of the epidermis. The life expectancy is increased by 10%. Intellect is decreased by the strain by 30%. Based on this information, I would extrapolate that we could simply outlive these mutants. However, based on the fact that these mutants have a super high concentration of the virus, it stands to reason that there would uh, be some place which is creating them. As to where they could be, I cannot hazard a, a guess. Uh, I Like I said yesterday, I, I think I'm, I'm more interested in Loki. I'm really looking forward to Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Where did we go? What can I help you okay. with? Okay. I heard something about hollow discs. Use How can I read them? Boy 2000 to read the discs. Insert the disc into the reader. Where if you have the proper computer skills, you should be able to scan the data. Where can I learn the computer the skills? Brotherhood has some automated courses that you can take. Here, I'll show you. Uh, so you can actually use the uh, computers here to enhance your... Uh, science skill uh, and your uh, 
repair skills, but it takes time. Uh, and again, we don't want to waste time because we've got Max. So. What can I help you with? I'd like to know more about the weapons we make here. Speak to the knights. Ask them to show you one of the latest laser pistols I designed. Thanks. What can I help you with? Uh, how can I prevent radiation poisoning? You would need some anti-radiation drugs. I have some. Take these immediately if you think you're near radiation. Thanks. What can I help you with? Please talk to one of the other scribes. He makes sure the Brotherhood stays on the path of righteousness. The only salvation this tortured planet and its people have. Without us, humanity is sure to perish. Please talk to one of the other scribes. Please talk to one of the other scribes. Who? Wait, that name sounds familiar. Perhaps he's a leader of some. Please talk to one of the other. Please talk to one of the other scribes. I'm trying to finish up reports for the elders. Please talk to one of the others. Please talk yes, she to doesn't one of have the much, other scribe. Please talk to one of the other scribes. I'm trying to finish up reports for the Elder. I assume you're referring to the last nuclear war. The Brotherhood is doing everything it can to restore that which was lost. Speak to the Knights. Anyway, that, um... The tape proving that the mutants are sterile is important. see here. Here's the workshop over here. This is where they uh, make power armor and everything. Oh, so you're the one, huh? What? I don't think it's just, you You know, no one's ever made it back from the ancient order. What do you do here? Eh, I, I fix stuff, run maintenance checks, that sort of crap. Uh, what kind of crap? Power armor? Anything else that needs fixing? How can I get my hands on some more power armor? I'll give you this power armor right here, but it's missing a systolic mo motivator. It's useless to start it. Where can I get one of those? Eh, they got more than enough up the supply room, but Michael and his uh, damn form say that this particular suit is enough to specs. Damn bureaucrats. So if I brought you a systolic motivator, would you fix it for me? Nah, hold up a minute there, fella. That would take a good couple of hours, and I'd loan you a manual and my tools, but you'd have to repair it yourself. Well, beside my, Michael, where can I get one? Eh, well, Ravis has a couple of them. I wouldn't ask him for one, though. Only the honored are supposed to wear these things, these here power suits. Besides, I think he has an unnatural attachment to them. Hmm, okay, thanks a lot. Alright, so if we bring him the motivator part, we can get an extra suit of power armor that we can use later to, uh... Uh, build a uh, uh, a tempered suit of power armor, which is much stronger than any other power armor. Uh, later in the game, you can actually find uh, a suit of Tesla armor, which is nice because it's uh, um, you won't take as much damage from energy weapons, and a lot of the mutants carry uh, laser Gatling guns. But uh, I tend to just stick with the the tempered power armor. What do you say, Adam? Looking forward to anything uh, else from the MCU lineup. Um, oh yeah, M Moon Knight and, and Miss Marvel look good. Um, they say Oscar Isaac's going to be playing Moon Knight, which should be fun. Uh, the actress they picked to play uh, Kamala Khan for Miss Marvel looks great. R really looks the part, I think. I think there's nothing else for us on this floor. If we try breaking into any of the other rooms here, uh, we get in trouble. 
Glorious Royal. Yeah, yeah, again, Miss Barbara looks great. I still, I, I want to know what happened to that New Warriors TV show they said they were going to do. Uh, I really hope they bring that back. Um, I mean, I, I'll, I'll be happy just seeing Squirrel Girl in any form. I, I really want them to do live-action Squirrel Girl. All right, so this is, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to be hanging out here much. We're just going to come right in, talk to the Elder, and get out. But uh, as you can see, this is where the Brotherhood holds all their important meetings. Here's one of their mainframes. But uh, again, in the second game, they replaced that with the one from the uh, uh, West Tech facility. Um... Let's see here. Uh, hello, youngster. Cabot said you wanted to talk. Look, I'm uh, I'm pretty stacked up right now, so I'll uh, I'll help you out as long as you don't start flapping your gums too much. You know, outsiders are like that, always jawing. <laughs> Gotta like me, huh? So this is um, Frank Welker, who is a legendary voice actor. Again, look on his IMDb page. And it's ridiculous the number of voice actor roles he's had over the years. But he was a mainstay at Hanna-Barbera, original voice of Freddy from Scooby-Doo. Um, let's see here. He was Megatron on, on Transformers as well as, like, half the Autobots. Um, you know, he was... Uh, uh, I mean, he's basically the voice of your childhood. <laughs> Maybe you could tell me. Everyone here seems to be on edge. It's like you're getting ready to go to war, but no one knows with who. Well, the merchants from the hub told us a bunch of caravans disappeared on their way up north. I think there's an army in the mountains. But the elders, uh, they don't want to act until they're sure. I found proof that it is this army which is causing the disappearance of the caravans. It's an army of mutants. You have good reason to be worried. They look very formidable. And you understand the problem. To survive... We need someone who knows the outside, like you. Uh, your barter skill, you can actually extort a thousand caps from him, but let's just offer to do it. Uh, I'll go scout out the area to the north and report what I found. Good. Anything else you need to ask? Uh, would it be possible for me to get hold of better weapons? Well, I suggest you talk to my assistant, Mathia, about that. Okay. Uh, so we can ask for a ripper, a power fist, a laser pistol, a rocket launcher, a sniper rifle. Well, we've already got the sniper rifle, the rocket launcher, um, and a laser pistol. Uh, the power fist, the ripper, um, there's only one of each that you can find in the game otherwise. So here, whatever we ask for is kind of significant. Uh, neither the power fist nor the ripper is actually better than the uh, super sledge. Um, but, uh, yeah. Well, let's just ask for a power fist. What the hell do you want now? <laughs> <laughs> a fine, handsome, upstanding man. The high elder position is to mediate the meetings between the elders. See, two years ago I got talked into it. If I'd have known then. Roger Maxon, huh? Well, he led our people here in a great exodus. Started the Brotherhood from scratch, quite a leader. That's where you are. You want the long version, go talk to Vree. Yeah, she didn't really tell you much either about the history of the Brotherhood, but anyway. <laughs> what was that? No, I don't believe I've ever heard it. What was that? What was that? No, I don't believe the hub's down to the southeast. They trade us food and things for the weapons we make here. Now, if you're ever down there, you talk to Butch Harris. Butch is the head of the Fargo traders. He's a little slimy, but not a total waste. Unlike those water merchants, bunch of damn vultures, all of them. What was that? 
No, I don't believe I've ever heard of it. Hell if I know. Let's see here. What else should I ask him about? Hmm. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Hell if I know. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Scribes copy down the weapon specs. We've got information all the way back to my granddad. Sometimes a scribe comes up with a new idea for a weapon. <laughs> Doesn't happen too often. Now they all answer to free. Well, that's what you are. Initiates train and learn to become knights or scribes. The knights make the weapons. When he's good enough, a knight can advance to become a paladin and then an elder and so forth. Right now, Rhombus is head of the knights. Hell if I know. Rombo's been here a long time. Bit stiff, but a hell of a soldier. Oh, I don't know anything about... Then get out. I... All right, just about ready to sign off for the day here, but let's uh, wrap up some things first. Go back to the first floor. Okay, Rhombus doesn't want to talk to us, does he? Well, if he's not going to come out, I'm just going to steal from him. All right. Explain yourself, initiate. Let's see here. So this is Rhombus. He's voiced by Clancy Brown. Then leave, and I will forget this little... No, oh, here he comes. Okay. Can I ask you a few questions? Can you give me some history behind the Brotherhood? In the main library. Heard any good rumors? Do not put stock in rumors. Fine. If you make him angry, he'll kick you out. What can you tell me about the surrounding the areas? Hub and the Boneyard are south, mountains are east, and desolate wasteland north. Whoever goes there never returns. Tell me about yourself. I am Rhombus, head of the Paladin. I train those willing to learn. Can you teach me some stuff? Stuff? I could teach you how to fight, if you had any ability. But the High Elder decreed no training of new recruits until the threat of invasion passes. Why has he stopped the training? It takes too long. I spend my time improving those already trained. Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. I have never heard of that. General Maxon was the finest head paladin ever. When he took over as High Elder, I became head paladin. I have never heard of that. I have no knowledge of such a thing. They are the makers of the weapons. I do not know of that. They copy the weapon documents down and come up with new ideas. What they research? The knights make. I do not know of that. Ask Free. She would know. I do not know of that. I have never heard of that. The hub and the boneyard are south. Mountains are east. The boneyard is far south. You will find only violence there. All right. So that was uh, Clancy Brown. Uh, he plays that character, Rhombus, and uh, you probably know him best from playing uh, Mr. Krabs on SpongeBob. <laughs>
But uh, yeah, he used to do, I mean, he did the Kurgan in, in the original Highlander. All right, let's see if we can get the part off this guy. I'm looking for a systolic mo motivator. Uh, yeah, I was sent here to get a systolic motivator. I don't see it on the list. Well, you don't? Ordnance was supposed to send one down yesterday. Look, uh, can you help me out? If I don't get this part, it's going to be my ass. So I'm sure the form will be later, later today. No, oh, okay, here you go. Just don't tell anyone that I gave this to you. Rhombus would have my head if you knew I had given parts out without proper authorization. Thanks. All right, so we got the part. Oh, that's right. You're a Ghost Rider fan, huh? I don't know. I'm, if they do Squirrel Girl in, in Miss Marvel, that would be fun, yeah. Um, I think uh, as far as Ghost Rider goes, they already did him on, on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, here it is. Great. Just let me install this into the unit. Okay, there we go. Okay, you're all set to go. Here, take this manual. If you have any problems with the, uh, repairing the thing, you should have no problem. Uh, so he actually, what he's giving you is... As you may have guessed, yet another Dean's Electronics. Anyway, let's uh, go ahead and repair this. And now we have an extra suit of power armor. done here for now. Um, I think next weekend uh, we're going to go take on uh, Mariposa military base and uh, see what those super mutants are up to. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and save the game. pick this up next week. Um, not sure what I'm going to be playing tomorrow, but uh, we'll figure something out. Might go back to uh, um, might return to Bug Snacks. We'll see. Uh, everybody have a good night. Uh, thanks for watching.